Wallet, phone, Bailey, <laughs> Nate. In high school, I fell in love with a film called The Road from Caracal. The best part about the film was the guy in it. Kyle was this outlandish, oversized character who really just wanted us all to go on our own adventure. I think what spoke to me most was Kyle's understanding of what adventure really is. Now here's what I believe. Real adventure is not polished. It's not the result of some marketing budget. There's no hashtag for it. It burns brightest on the map's edges, but it exists in all of us. It exists at the intersection of imagination and the ridiculous. You have to have faith. It will find you there. And when it does, remember, there's just one question. In this life, when the road comes to an end, will you keep pedaling? To me, Kyle had this beautiful life philosophy. As I went on my own adventures in college, I tried to apply it. Quite quickly, though, I, I noticed there was a problem. A problem of perception. You see, a lot of people today think the only way to have a grand adventure is to drop 83,000 and go to the Himalaya. And I mean, yeah, the, the Himalaya is cool, but in my opinion, any adventure that begins with you paying $83,000 isn't much of an adventure at all. So in 2022, as I was about to graduate, I searched for my own anti-Everest. Inspired by Kyle, I knew I wanted something that pushed me, that challenged me. That wasn't easy. I wanted my own grand adventure. And eventually, it came to me. I had to return to Pico de Orizaba. <laughs> it all began in 2019. Wow. That's what I was talking about. They like the shadow. The video with the, uh, the situations like this is Sam Roberts. It was originally his idea to climb Pico de Orizaba in 2019. <laughs> Honestly, Sam was kind of fucking crazy, but in a good way. He decided to lead the trip, even though he had never even been to Pico before. 
that first trip in 2019 made me forever grateful to Sam. Even with two bivvies and a summit day of 17 hours, it was one of the greatest trips of my life. I've now climbed much more difficult and much more technical mountains than Pico. But I still think of that trip constantly. It was so incredibly special. And so in 2022, I decided it was time for the club to return. So I sent a message out. <laughs> At first, I was kind of afraid I had scared everyone off. But the messages slowly came. And suddenly, we were in Mexico City. <laughs> Finally, it was time for the crew to bus from Mexico City to Tila Chiachuca, a small town nestled along the edge of Pico de Orizaba. We stayed at Servamont, this amazing climbing hostel owned by Senior Reyes. It's been in his family for over four generations, and he basically just feeds you bomb ass food and provides logistical support for when you're on the mountain. Also, Ariel lied to us. She can play the guitar. We were stoked when it was finally time to get on the mountain. Como se dice in Borrego. Borrego? Borrego. Hello, Borrego. Our new home was La Piedra Grande Hut at 14,000 feet. Yeah, it, it looks cool. It looks cool, Ronnie. We did all the classics of alpine living. Sharpen crampons, sharpen more crampons, cooked, went on acclimatization hikes, and most importantly, desperately looked for cell signals so we could use Mexican Tinder. But we had a problem. The summit day that would give us the most acclimatization time had awful winds. And as much as I wanted to be on the death glacier with 40 mile per hour winds, I decided it was best we go a day early, even though we wouldn't be as acclimated. Oh, and the visibility was awful. Mm. No me gusta el tiempo hoy. No me gusta No me gusta. Me gusta el pasta. In moments like this, the decision-making process is complex and hazy. As a group, we decided to climb until it didn't make sense. 
And all of a sudden, we were climbing. It's time. It's really emotionado. We're about 15k right now. Doing well, doing well. We are at like. 16, 16, 16, 16 K with our man Carlos. <laughs> yeah. Say hi, Carlos. Di hey, hola. Si, hola. And this is where we're going, right over there. Man, this brings back some memories. Finally, we were on the glacier. Every step kind of sucked. At 18,000 feet, you have roughly 50% of the oxygen you have at sea level. And it makes climbing incredibly difficult. <laughs> but finally, we made it. I'm so dizzy, I might fall into it, but... <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Woo! All right. Wow. 18,000 feet, just some gringos from Ohio. Wow. We're at the top. And we're kind of fucking dead, um, but uh, we made it. We made it, up. we made it up. We're just gonna have to go really slow and cautiously. Eat lots of food. Eat lots of food and water on the descent, and I think we'll be good. Yeah. Go team. Go team. Yeah. We crushed Whee! it. Oh yeah, and then we went clubbing until 5 a.m. Some people may have made out with some other people, and we fell in love with this Australian named Tilly. Oh yeah, and uh, Justin was offered cocaine. We're pretty sure he didn't do it. <laughs>